Very good morning to all my dear students. I know you have been eagerly waiting for today's lecture and even I have been eagerly waiting to meet all of you. And I really feel happy that it's a weekend and my students are geared up sitting with their pens and pencils in hand to study the chapter of Indian Partnership Act. So we have already completed the first chapter of Indian Partnership Act that is unit 1 where we discussed about the general nature of partnership. After that we have done the topic of relationship of partners. We are still in between chapter 2. We are continuing with relationship of partners. Today what we are going to do is we'll be winding up relationship of partners and we'll be starting the chapter of registration of firms and dissolution. So registration and dissolution is again divided into two parts. We'll try to finish up with the registration topic today, and then in the next lecture we'll be covering up dissolution. Now, before we proceed towards for today's lecture, I want to do certain descriptive questions with you children, because you have already uh, revised your sale of goods. We have completed sale of goods. So I told you that in between partnership we will be trying to take up. certain questions related to sale of goods so here is your june 2023 question paper which we are going to discuss today so before that let me have the good morning wishes with all of you i forgot to take your names today good morning ranjit aditya avni avni singhal today i have seen your name for the first time vimal kumar joya madhu Anuj, Nitya, Shree, good morning, all of you. Divya, Nancy, Vishnu, Dio, Mohammed, happy to see you again. Yes, even I am happy to see you, Mohammed Farhan, again, all of you. Shreya, Ashnika, Gupta, Ruchika, Nusa, Muskan, Dheeraj. So many of students are here with us. Pavan, Anu. So I am hundred percent sure that you would have studied your <clears throat> revised your um, sale of goods, and we will be now. taking a small test of sale of goods so that you don't forget what you have done in your previous lectures also i'm going to tell you how you have to attempt your descriptive questions most of the time you keep asking so what best could have been rather than taking the question paper directly which has come in the previous year so that is what we're going to discuss so i am also going to show you the pattern of the question paper which used to come just a uh, last till last attempt because now we will be changing a little bit pattern because now bcr is not there you have only business paper earlier it was divided into two sections a and b now you only have business paper two that is business laws so we're not having bcr from now onwards thank you mr k manish good morning preeti sukanya negmi garv rani all of you those who have joined now renuka muskan good morning all of you all right so the first generally the first topic that has been coming is from your indian contract act which you have already done and after that the second question is most of the time from the companies act so once we have done the companies act we will be discussing this question now my humble request to all of you whenever you open up the mock test papers and suggested question papers generally students tell me that you know uh, uh, ma'am i got confused by reading this question i got a little scared just for example of abc limited has allotted shares now you have not done this topic definitely it will give you a botheration so my humble request to all of you while opening the question papers only try to do the questions the chapters that you have completely done if you have done indian contract act studied revised then as a homework you can revise this question number 1 don't look into b and c b because you have not get done so what we are going to discuss question number 1 part c is most of the time four marks question from sale of goods only so this is your test that i am going to take mohammed you are saying you are still having doubt so you can ask your doubts that's why i am taking your test of sale of goods act today i am trying to cover as much as possible so although written test is not possible on the online platform but still we can discuss we can understand how the descriptive questions have to be written all right so this question you all have to answer me mr a contracted to sell his car his swift car to mr b and both of them missed to fix the price let me just enlarge the sheet more so that you can read it very clear i hope now it's clear later a refused to sell the swift car to mr b on the ground that the agreement was void because there was uncertainty about the price 
does mr b have any right against mr a under the sale of goods act now first of all what you have to apply your mind if examiner gives you such kind of question so sabse pehle humne ye dekhna hai ye question hamara sale of goods act se related now i should revise in my mind the four chapters of sale of goods where was it mentioned something related to price so i can i first have to find out what is the concerned provision what is this topic actually talking about what is something which is related in this topic that is something which is असर्टेनमेंट ऑफ प्राइस ही प्राइस की बात कर रहे हैं तो ऐसा तो नहीं कहीं कोई असेंशियल एलिमेंट था हमने पढ़ा हुआ है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ सेल में बायर सेलर होते हैं सेल बनता है एंड प्राइस बड़ा जरूरी है तो ये प्राइस के बारे में कुछ कहना चाह रहा है आई यू ऑल विद मी सेक्शन नाइन एंड टेन कुड यू हिट इट कुड यू कम टू याइंड दैट दिस क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू दैट थिंग अभी तक के लिए वो दिमाग में आ जाना भी बहुत बड़ी बात है क्योंकि हम फर्स्ट टाइम हमने पढ़ा है जिन्होंने एग्जाम क्लियर कर लिया होता है उनके लिए बहुत ईजी हो जाता है but first time when you reading it is it takes lot of effort so let us quickly see the answers what will happen what are, what is your answer what you have given me first let me read out that and then we will discuss a certain amount of price very good divya all right mr anuj kumar it's your birthday today a very happy birthday to you anuj good morning anuja divya mtv question paper ki answer ki match nahi ho rahi hai okay miss divya we will try to take up certain mtv question papers also and we'll try to find out what's the problem very good answer reasonable price needs to be paid what about others only joy bene kanoj anushka rani divya aditya kumar i have just received your answers others are you trying to find the answers in the chapter have you gone to search for the answers ha huh? you have to give the answers immediately all right section 9 and 10 is applicable very good juhi kumari K Manish, Pavan, Joya, Praveen, very good, excellent. You all have answered reasonable price. Now here is a short platform, so you quickly had to write a certain amount of price and reasonable price. So the connection is right, but how to attempt and how to write the answers? This is why we have taken up this question. Now how to write the answer? Number one, concern provision. You all will not just write this. What you have learned to write with me? Concern provision. Then dash as per the provisions of. we don't need to remember this as per the provisions of sale of goods act price is a consideration which is paid for the sale of goods and it is a requirement abhi maine aapko bataya na it is one of the essential requirement to complete the contract of sale ma'am i don't remember section 2 sub section 10 ma'am i don't remember section 9 it's okay no need to remember it it's okay don't write section sections are not important in ca foundation but never write a wrong section wrong section is something really bad not writing a section is not something bad so now what the section 9 says if you remember section 9 talks about the ascertainment of price price is can be fixed maybe left in the manner either the price is fixed or it is left in the manner to be fixed remember in my presentation three different points i've shown you price is either fixed or the parties have to say or by the course of dealings between the parties so you can mention these three points this is what the concern provision talks about now what we have to do we have to write these facts of the case hamara second paragraph ye banega facts of the case let me just drag you below so first paragraph concern provisions everyone is with me on the same now we will write facts of the case what are the facts of the case a and b have entered into the contract same as it is question mein se summary lekar bana dena they have contracted for the sale of motor car they did not fix the price a refused to sell the car now b can legally demand the car now this is conclusion that he has given along with that so this is the thing a refused to sell the car on this ground till this much is your facts of the case this much is your facts of the case now what is the conclusion paragraph now you have to conclude conclusion since both the parties missed to discuss the price it will be a valid contract the buyer can pay a reasonable price hence b can legally demand the car and a can recover a reasonable price from mr b this is how your answer has to come out study and ici are giving you the answers see what what more beautiful can could have happened we have given descriptive questions at the back of chapters also trust me if you read the chapter carefully and you try to solve all the descriptive questions and after the syllabus you try to join the 
uh, these um, MTPs and RTPs, you will beautifully and easily clear your examination. I'm telling you, for all the chapters, you should try doing that for all the subjects. All right. So provision ho gayi hamari, humne facts bhi likh liye and ye humne conclusion mein understand kar diya. Actual answer was just one liner that is reasonable price. But examiner is not going to give you marks if you simply write, okay, we'll pay reasonable price. Answer wahi hai, likhne ka tarika is something that needs to be taken care of. All right. Okay. Now, question number two again from contract and LLP. So this is something which we have not yet done. So you don't need to look into this. Then your registration procedure of partnership. So we are still not, this is your chapter number three of Indian partnership. Once we have done, then the way we get covered. This is what we are going to cover today. So see straight away direct question has come. What is the registration procedure? Can you imagine such a straightforward question? I would have loved to attempt and it is six marks question. So we will discuss all this application, how it has to be done, how the registration section 58 and 59. Once we have discussed, then you can read this question from here. So now what we are going to do is we're just simply going to see the questions related to sale of goods act because that is something which we have done completely. So now here comes your sale of goods and also one we have interesting question from partnership. So question number four, 12 mark questions we can attempt from the slavers we have done so far. Number one, describe the rights of the buyer against the seller in case of breach of contract of sale. Straight away, six marks question, very scory. Just ne padhai kari hai, just ne learn kara hua hai, just ne chapter yaad kara hai. Uske liye to ye bohat creamy question hai, wo directly points dik kara jai. Breach of contract kab hota hai, kiska breach of contract hua hai, buyer ko rights mil rahe hai against the seller. So that means seller ne breach kara hai. Seller ne breach kaise kara hoga, seller ne goods ne diya hoonge. Agar seller goods nahi dega, to buyer ke kya rights hai? All the rights, six rights that I've been given in the chapter, right for filing a suit, right for taking an action, for the, uh, for the goods he will be filing a case, for the interest money, all those points will directly come. You can see the answers, damages for non-delivery, suit for specific performance, breach of warranty, no need to remember sections. This is the last topic of the third chapter, breach of contract, where you have studied. Oh, sorry, fourth chapter, unpaid seller. Last topic, you simply have to write all these rights. Repetition of contract before due date, suit for interest. As it is, vowelly points, apni language me likh dena, zaruri nahi as it is likhna but the same points have to be highlighted. Underline the points, examiner will see the points, he will understand you have revised it. Now, retirement of partner is something which we tried covering in the previous chapter, in the previous class. So, question number four, B is for all of you. Let's read it together. P, Q and R are partners in a partnership firm. R retires from the firm without giving public notice. How fresh fresh abhi dimag mein hai. Public notice abhi abhi humne padha hai. So P approached S, an electronic appliances trader for purchase of 25 fans of his firm. So now there were three partners, P, Q and R. R has retired. So R to chala gaya. P ek existing partner hai. Jo ki S kon hai? S is a dealer over here, third party. S is not a partner. He is a dealer of electronic appliances and he purchased 25 fans for this home. P introduced E, an employee, as his partner to S. S believed that E and E are, are the partners to whom 25 fans have been supplied on credit. S did not receive the payment for the fans even after the expiry of credit period. From whom can he recover the payment as per the provisions of Indian contract act? Such a beautiful question, examiner has framed. One partner has retired. Hidden point is, what is the hidden point over here? Without giving public notice. S ko kya pata aap retire ho ho? S ke liye to aap partner hi ho. Kya ho sakta hai? Aap ne bata. E is an employee, has been introduced as a partner to S. So what kind of partner E has become? You have to tell me who all are liable. Beautiful answers given for the previous questions. Oh my God, S. Sudhaka, you remember all the sections also. That's great. Yes, you can write down in your own words. Ms. Joa Praveen. Thank you. Mohammed says it becomes easy when you teach us. So that is the purpose that it should become easy for you. Yes, Ms. Devya, it's a short summary. Same from the question exactly. 
Good morning, Riti. Ari Haran, suing for damages, suing for breach of contract. Excellent answers you have given for the previous one. Renuka Gaurav, you can check all these kind of admin kind of issues from the ICI admin query itself about the kinds of pens that are allowed. Some, some say different color of pens are not allowed, but underlining is very important. But still, you need to check it with ICI once. If public notice is not given, retiring partner is also liable. Mr. Suraj says that. He has become partner by holding out excellent muskan. Kinjal is saying sub partner, not at all. Kinjal, Kotia, why are you saying sub partner? Sub partner ka toh role nahi hai. All those who have sent partner, he becomes partner by holding out. I'm so proud of you students. And R will be liable because he has not given public notice. Is the excellent answer. So that means you all have understood. Obviously, I don't expect all of you to write the exact answer in this small box of chat box. But at least your content is right. Your brainstorming that you're doing is absolutely right. So let us quickly see the answers. So retiring partner continues to be liable until the public notice has been given. Once he has given the public notice or he is not liable to the third party without knowing that he was a partner. So if he is not knowing that he was a partner, then he will not be liable. Number one, to you. Number two, you're holding yourself as a partner. Then you become a liable. In fact, he's not partner. Section 28, partner by holding out as it is. Jitna aata hai, chipka dena, pura ka pura wo so, both no concern provisions first. Section 232 likha. Yes, Sukanya, that's right. Both of them will be liable. Section 32, aapko Section 32 yaad nahi, as per the provisions of Partnership Act. Retirement ke baare mein lik dena. Phir as per the provisions of a Partnership Act. Partner by holding out lik dena. Instant case, ab ye isne mera kehna maan liya. Ye baisi de raha. Aapko facts of case pehle de raha. R has not given the public notice. S believes that he's a partner. Therefore, R will be liable. He was introduced as a partner through whom said so he will also be liable. Therefore, P, Q, R, and E, all the partners will be held liable to S. S can recover the money from any one of them. So this is beautifully this answer for question 4B has been written. This is the exact format that you have to follow. Clear, Rogia? You want to do one more question? Okay, we have two more questions for all of you from sale of goods. One is two marks, one is four marks. So auction sale, we have recently studied about auction sale. So let's read two marks question has come in the exam from the auction sale topic. So auction sale was held on 7th March 2023 by fall of hammer to the highest bidder X. Fall of hammer means once the fall of hammer has happened, the ownership has set to be transferred. Payment of auction price was made on 8th March followed by the delivery of goods on 10th March. Decide when the auction sale is complete. This is so, so simple. So what is the date of completion of auction sale? You have to tell me. When does the, the auction sale was completed? Good answers all of you have given. Sigufta say R will also be held liable. He was an active partner. No, R will also definitely, the one who is continuing to be a partner will be, an, he's saying that we have also assumed that he was an active partner. So public notice is must. Otherwise, in case of sleeping partner, then it might not have been required to give the public. All right. So have you all written the date? I'm still waiting. When is the date when the auction sale will set to be complete? Children, I'm waiting for your answers. You have to give me the answer for question number 5A, first part. I am not going to tell you the answer for this. It's so simple. All those who have written 7th March 2023, that is the correct answer. So can you tell me why have you written 7th March? What happened on 7th March? 7th March is the correct answer because the uh, auction is completed on the fall of hammer. Then 7th March 2023, when the hammer was fought, auction sale is set to be complete. Excellent. All of you, clear? I hope kisi ko good out nahi is one. Ab chalte hain, question number 5A, second part. Certain goods were sold by sample, by J to K. So sample ki baat kar raha hai, ma'am. Hame ye kaun si chapter mein lekar ja raha hai, ye sale of goods ke na implied conditions and warranties mein sale by sample ki kuch baat karne ja raha hai. So, my entire mindset mein provisions will go down. Okay, good. Only one child has given the wrong answer, 10th March and 8th March. That is wrong. Otherwise, all of you are correct. Suraj, it was not 10th. Anusa, it was not 10th. It was 7th March. Others have, all of you have given the correct answer. So, very good. 7th March was the correct answer. 
ओके सो नाउ ऑल माई माइंड विल गो इन दी सेल ऑफ प्रोविजन दैट इज सेल बाय सैम्पल से रिलेटेड मेरे को सोचना है भी ये क्या कहने जा रहा है तो उसने क्या बोला हु इन टर्न सोल्ड द गुड्स बाय सैंपल टू एल ये हम क्वेश्चन कर चुके हैं ऑलरेडी प्रीवियस एग्जाम में आया हुआ है ए ने बी को बेचा था बी ने सी को एवरीथिंग वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो नाउ एम रिजेक्टेड द गुड्स व्हाट एडवाइस आर यू गोइंग टू के एंड एल कैन यू सी हाउ द एग्जामिनर हैज रिपीटेड द क्वेश्चन it is a previous paper question 2019 we have discussed in a class also and same question has come in 2023 maine bhi abhi dekha aapke samne ki same question aaya hua hai akash yadav so can you all those who are asking bachcha these questions are already there by the icci it has been uploaded on the institute's website i will just show you in a while where these questions are so do, so that you can directly refer to them and you can practice these questions but right now i am not going to show it to you because if i show you then you'll cheat and give me the answers so i'm taking your test how do the answer of the comments questions mr yogesh kumar i did not understand what are you asking please uh, just ask again i do not understand all right so what is the answer for this one children question number 5a2 it's very very simple what will happen what are the rules of sale by sample can K and L. What advice would you like to give? Can M reject the goods? What will happen if M reject the goods? The sample was shown and sample was later on sold from L to M. M found the goods are not according to sample rejected and gave a notice to L. L also filed a case against K. K filed a case against J. R K and A uh, L will be held. No, ma'am, they cannot reject the goods because they have already accepted. Very good, Miss Divya. Miss Divya is quickly giving the answers and so elaborative way. Very nice. Ari Haran has given the correct answer. Anushka Raj Muskan, Mr. Negmi, how to download the assignment? So, Mr. Negmi Rosario, you simply go to the uh, admin uh, query where you are sending me the queries. There is a, a portal over there. you can uh, refer to the assignment and notes and when you click on that button it will show you all the presentations and you can just click on one presentation once you open the presentation you can download the pdfs from there very good juhi anjali jua anuj kumar all of you have given the correct answers so let's quickly see the answers for all the others who have still not given the answers this is how you have to write the answer first of all section 17 provisions hame section 17 yaad nahi hai koi baat nahi hum simple likh denge as per the provisions of sale of goods act whenever the contract of sale by sample happens the bulk must correspond with the sample and the buyer should be given the opportunity of comparing now in the instant case i am received it but now he has further sold it therefore he cannot reject the goods and cannot file up uh, he has sold the goods okay fine m received the goods now he has not given you the entire uh facts of the case he has simply briefly told you that m received the goods you can tell the about uh, k and l story also little bit one liner and now you can say that m can reject the goods and can file a case why because the goods were not as per the sample as far as k and l are concerned l can only recover the damages and k can recover the damages they will be not treating it as a breach of condition because the goods were sold as per the sample they have shown their acceptance by selling the goods for simple baat khatam ऑल राइट फिर ये अगला क्वेश्चन कॉर्पोरेट वेल का है जब हम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट पढ़े जब हम कंपनीज एक्ट पढ़ेंगे तब हमें आएगा एंड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में भी से भी देख लो कितना सिंपल क्वेश्चन आया हुआ है डिफरेंस बिटवीन वाइड एंड वाइडल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट क्रीमी क्वेश्चन स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड फाइव मार्क्स क्वेश्चन यू कैन राइट इट बट वॉट इज माई क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैव टू डू इज वॉट आर द राइट ऑफ द पार्टनर्स सो फोर मार्क्स क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम पार्टनरशिप ऑल्सो वी कैन डू बिकॉज यू हैव डन दिस एज अ पार्ट ऑफ सिलेबस so question number 6 b quickly answer me what are the rights of the partners with respect to conduct of the business under indian partnership act my students have revised everything so nicely think for a while and answer me nancy anuza pariyush rai renuka ditya vivek mutyani sanya preeti garv yogesh all your answers were correct Miss Madhu, your answer was correct. And Beeshwari, Rani Prasad, all of you have given correct answers. Sakshi, give me answer for this one. As in the question, two sections are covered. Yes, Anushka Raj, you briefly have to write about both the questions.
Anuj Kumar, you have simply written the right to take part in the conduct of business. So what are the rights with respect to conduct of business? That is what you have to mention. He can inspect the goods, right to be consulted. Yes, Mohammed Farhan, all the rights given in the section 12. So you have tried to simplify it. You have not mentioned, you have just given the section. So let's quickly see the rights what have been given. The section 12, you have to write every right to take part in the conduct of the business, to perform the duties diligently. All the matters arising in the ordinary matters, majority of the partners and something which is very important, consent of all the partners is required. Right to access the books of accounts, inspect and in case of death, his legal heirs and uh, legal representatives can also have the right. So since it is a four marks question, so he has only talked about section 12 and he's only asking about the right with respect to conduct of business. Children, if the same question would have come for six marks, then you could have mentioned about the right to remuneration and trust and capital and trust and advances. But it's not just specific rights right with respect to the conduct of business. That's why we have simply given all the rights of Rights given under section 12. Okay. Miss Hethal, that is correct. All of you have given the correct answers. <clears throat> All right. Now let's proceed towards our presentation where we left the topic. We have done descriptive questions. A uh, few of you had certain queries related to Indian Partnership Chapter. Uh, in section 23 and 24 in the previous class, I have read your queries. So let's quickly see what we have left from that chapter. First, we will complete our previous chapter, chapter number two, and then we will proceed to chapter number three. Did you enjoy doing this descriptive question paper with me? Was it a good revision? Yes or no? Tell me. Uh, Mohammed, I told you section is not compulsory. I simply told you that if it had been longer question and they are asking you all the rights, then you would have written the rights given under right section 13 as well. Very good, S. Sudhakar. Beautiful answer you have given. All right. So you all enjoy doing the question paper. So we'll try to take up on another question paper from say once we have done the syllabus now. So then so that we can answer all the questions from partnership also. So today after doing registration, you can answer that question that has come in the paper uh, related to registration also. And then we'll try to do one another previous year question paper so that you can revise your sale of course in partnership and completely we'll try to cover up it from the question papers also. And if you ask me how well you're preparing, I can tell you, you are really doing very well because I have asked you so many questions without even telling you that it's your test today and you have answered it very beautifully. So give yourself a patting from my side. Well done. All right. So you had certain queries related to 23, 24. Let me just quickly go through those queries. Section 23. Okay. Those who don't have any queries and those who want to understand Getting good grasp day by day, Aditya Kumar is saying. Very good. Thank you, Divya. I'm glad you enjoyed this revision. Good, Renuka. Sagufta, that's great. Regular basis. Yeah, because you're studying on regular basis now. So that's good. You have a doubt in section 19. Okay. What is the meaning of conduct of business? Mr. Negumi, conduct of business means business ko karna. Kis tarah se aap business karte ho? Aapke paas kya right hai us business ko karne ka? So conduct karna means business ko operate karna. So you have a right to ask the other majority of the partners if it is an ordinary course of business. If it is a major change, then all the consent has to be taken. Nitya Shri also enjoyed revising sale of goods. That's great. Thank you, Ms. Khan. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Sanya Khan. She says, aapne law easy kar diya. Pehle dar lag raha tha. To darna to hai hi nahi, bita. Hamne kisi ne nahi darna. You have to love law. That is very, very important. Okay, Mr. Prince Kumar, I hope now you're able to write the answers. Still, if you have any doubts, you can ask me, okay? Thank you, Mr. Ranjit. Good. Yes, Vivek, there are changes in the pattern because the syllabus has changed. So definitely examination pattern is also changed. We'll try to cover up the pattern that is going to come up in the June 24 exam as well. Motiani says, mere words, mere words, which has been used number of times you're saying, just simply by words, you cannot prove it. That means the way we were using the prima facie evidence. So mere words means simply words, simple words that it is using. Okay. 
Okay. So section 23, again, you have to tell me what is the meaning of section 23? If one of the partner has admitted anything, if one of the partner has said yes to a particular thing, then it will be assumed that all the partners have agreed to it. Now, X and Y, they were the partners and they were purchasing this spare part. Why was this no rent? So why both of them were held liable? Because even if one of the partners is clear about the particular thing, then both the partners will be held liable for the thing. Okay. But there is a twist in this section 24. What I want to ask you is, was there any difference if notice to one partner has been given? Notice means one partner has the information of something. So all the partners will be held liable, yes or no? Tell me. Ma'am, please explain section 27. Okay, Preeti Singh, we'll take section 27. Tambeshwari, you can ask your doubt, what doubt you have in section 20. Partner to bind the form means, yes, Mr. Yogesh Kumar, it means mutual agency. Thank you, Ms. Devya. I'm glad law has become your favorite subject. Thank you, Ms. Akansha. Thank you so much, children. MTP June 20. Yes, definitely you will download that as well. One of the partners admitted. Yes, that's correct. Partners will be liable. It is based on the mutual agency. Very nice. That is absolutely correct. But my question over here to all of you is, that if one of the partner has the information of that thing, that means all of them will be considered to be a, a having the notice. But what was the difference in case of fraud? If one of the partner has done a fraud, then also you will say all the partners are held liable. No, ma'am. Then only that respective partner will be held liable. So you can write down over here in section example A8. It deals with section 24. Notice to one partner means notice to all the partners. Notice to one means notice to all the partners and all the partners will be held live. Example number nine deals with the exception that is fraud done by one of the partners. In case of a fraud, only that partner will be held live. Let's read example number nine. A partner A participates actively in the management of the business and bought certain goods while he knew a particular defect in the goods. Now, this A is an active partner. He has purchased goods for the firm and he knows that the goods are defect. Hai. His knowledge with regard to defects ordinarily will be considered as the knowledge of the firm. But the other partners are not aware of the defect. A had conspired to conceal the defect from other partners. Here the rule will become inoperative and the other partners can reject the goods on detection of the default. Here he says he is trying to commit a fraud. In this question, the car was a stolen one. It was a second hand purchase. All the partners were innocently involved. So all the partners were held liable. In example number 9, A is this line C. He is conspired to conceal the defect. Conspire means conspiracy karna. Wo apne uske saath seller ke saath milkar keh raha hai ki hum chup rahenge, hum sabko batayenge nahi ki inme defects hai. So A ne kapda purchase kara shop ke liye, us kapde mein hole tha, fata hua tha wo kapda aur seller ko bhi pata tha, A ko bhi pata tha. But jab B and C other partners ne dekha, they, they can reject the goods. You cannot say that section 24 is noticed by one partner is to all the partners. Here even if one of the partners is trying to say a fraud, other partners will not be held liable for that. Clear okay, example number 8 and 9 now. 20 bhi dekh lete hai. Kisi ko section 19 and 20 mein bhi doubt aara tha. Section 19 simply talks about implied authority. We have discussed it in the previous lecture also. Implied authority means all the partners have the authority to do the business with each other. But there are certain restrictions which law has given on these implied authorities. That means you cannot file a case to your arbitrator. You cannot open a bank account on behalf of firm. You cannot accept any liability on behalf of firm. You cannot purchase any immovable property. So all these eight restrictions have been given on the implied authority. What is the meaning of implied authority? That is the mutual agency principles. All the partners have the right to act for each other. Somebody is asking section 20. Where is the reference of section 20 is given? You can ask what specifically you have not understood. So, our previous class, section 20 simply talks about the extension and restriction of uh, 
अगर फ्रॉड हो तो उसी केस में स्मृति भारती देन दैट पार्टनर इज ओनली लाइव येस यू कैन राइट दी आंसर इन योर ओन वर्ड मिस्टर प्रयूष राय Yes, Nitya Shree. From that also, you can see the sample. That's absolutely correct. Prince Kumar is asking how to revise. Okay, so after the end of the, when we proceed towards the end of the lecture, that time remind me. I'll teach you. Sare partners liable honge. Anno Janusha, you are right in that case. Extension and restriction of partners. Somebody was asking section twenty. Please, you can ask me what you want to understand. All right, that's great, Miss Divya. Thank you so much. I'm glad you are able to pass on the information to others also. That's great. Okay, so here certain restrictions are put on the implied authority. Section nineteen specifically tell you that these are the cases where your implied authority is restricted. But section twenty tells you how your authority can be restricted or extended by the partnership agreement. So where the third party is not having knowledge about these restrictions, then third party will not bear the loss but if third party is having the knowledge and he is supplying the goods without uh, with having knowledge about the restriction then third party cannot claim the liability refer to the example that is given in my presentation then then it will become more easy okay so section 23 24 we have already done 25 to 27 also we have done so what is the liability of a partner quickly again your revision your test prince kumar this is what we are revising we are also discussing in between that is how you have to revise the lectures okay quickly tell me children negmi is asking section 13 sub section 7 which you should ask specifically what you have not understood so section 13 specifically talks about the rights of the partners Section thirteen C tells you interest on capital. Whatever capital you have invested in the business, you also get interest on that. How do you get interest on that? Number one, either there is an agreement for that. Number two, we have been following. It's a custom. We have been giving the interest. So if new partners also join, we will give interest on capital. Or number three, there is a statutory provision. Sometimes there is a legal provision in the partnership act or in the partnership deed that you have made. that it has to be complied with and then interest is definitely to be paid yes miss ashnika gupta you can write answer in points also unlimited liability very good anusha preeti all those who have given the correct answer so i just ask you what is the liability of the partner liability of the partner is unlimited so i hope 25 26 27 are clear to you you we have done these lectures in the previous class any misapplication made by the partner section 27 then only that partner is held liable or all the partners are held liable quickly tell me if any misapplication has been made partners are acting within their authority they receive any money then who will be held liable any misapplication has been made by the partners whose liability will it be section 27 with reference to i'm asking who will be held liable yes ma'am the firm will be held liable excellent here is the answer given for all of you the firm would be held liable in both the cases if even if the partner has received any money or property by misapplying or any money has been received and has been misapplied by any of the firm or partners both the cases firm will be held liable any misapplication done by the partners the whole of the firm becomes liable because on the basis of mutual agency principle now section 29 and 30 we'll revise at the end now what we had to start with expulsion of partners after that we will again come back to these sections we can have a quick revision from the presentation itself you all remember what is sub partnership children section 29 what was section 29 telling us if any partner has been introduced where one partner has taken the consent was the consent all the partners is required or majority of the consent is required for introducing a sub partner yes section 27 becomes applicable that's great unlimited liability all the partners good answers you all have given mr mohammed the case laws that we are doing are only important you don't need to go into unnecessarily into each and every case law in the chapter 
Mr. Prince Kumar, excellent. All the partners will be liable, even if misapplication has been done by one of the partners. Good. Majority of the partner, Madhu, you're saying, no, that's wrong. Consent of all the partners is required. Excellent. All those given, Anand Sahu, Sakshi, Aditya, Prince, Divya, Anushka, Raj. All the partners have to give consent if sub-partner has to be created. And what are the rights of the sub-partner? Can sub-partner interfere with the conduct of the business? Can the sub-partner, suppose there are three partners, A, B, and C. A has appointed a partner, has transferred his share of profits to Mr. P. Now the sub-partnership has been created between A and P. Can Mr. P refer to the books of accounts and interfere with the conduct of business? Yes, ma'am or no, ma'am? Yes, Mr. Arun, in P. Sukanya. Jaldi batao, beta. Can he interfere with the books of accounts? Anuj and Surat says, yes, ma'am, he can interfere. Why, bhai? Anand Sahu is also saying yes. No, not at all. All the partners have been. Preeti is saying, Mohammed, Anushka, Anand Sahu, Divya, Sanya, Mustan, you are correct. Hariti is correct. Sagufta, Akansha, Juhi are correct. No, you cannot interfere in the books of accounts till the continuation of business. Section 29, subsection 1 deals with the continuation of business till the time the business is being continued. Sub-partner cannot interfere and inspect the books of accounts. And once the partnership has been dissolved, once the partnership comes to an end, then Mr. P, the sub-partner, can refer to the books of accounts He because he steps into the all the original assets to which the original partner, Mr. A, was entitled to. Now he can interfere. So all those who have given the answer, yes, ma'am, no, he cannot do that. He can only do that only when the form has been dissolved. That time he can do. Very good. Ariyaran has given both the answers. He cannot tell till the time he's a partner. He's continuing. He can only interfere on the dissolution. Very good. Excellent answers, Joya Praveen, all of you. Good. So that means section 29 is also well understood by my students. And uh, now I have certain MCQs also. Why am I not taking up the MCQs? Let's quickly do the MCQs. I think this one we have done. Have we done these MCQs, children? I think we have done third one also. We have done the MCQs. So another MCQ that I want to ask you is, in case of a minor, what is the time period that has been given to the minor in order to confirm whether he can become, after attaining majority, within how much time period he should give the public notice? Is it five months, seven months, eight months, what? Yes, Tameshwari, yes. Thanks for reminding me. We have done all the MCQs from here. Yes, Miss Anjali, at the time of death or retirement of a partner, he can definitely check the books. Thank you, Preeti and friends, for telling me we have done them. Mr. Yogesh Kumar, where it is written in the question paper, comment on this. It means explain. So there you have to write all the provisions and you have to give your suggestions the way we have been doing the case study based answers. That is how you have to write the answers in this. So how much time period has to be given to the partners in order to, to the minor to confirm? So very good. Six months is the correct answer. So within six months, he has to decide whether he becomes the major, whether he wants to join the partnership firm or not. Okay, all of you have given the correct answer. Six months was the correct answer. Now, if I ask you, now if I ask you another question, what will happen after the minor chooses to become a partner? Answer me, what will his share of profits and what about his liabilities? Once the minor chooses to be a partner in the firm, what will be his share of profits and what will happen to his liabilities? This is a very important question. So beautiful. All of you have written six months. Great. Arun NP, not five months. It is six months. I confused you by giving you option of five months. Good, good, good. 
so what will be his share of profits and liability if minor chooses to become a partner in the firm within the 6 months his share of profits remains the same excellent his share of profit will remain the same but his liability he will become liable with the effect of retrospective effect means with the date of joining the firm he will become liable for all the liabilities of the firm from the date of joining of the firm very good is that clear all of you so admission retirement we have done now we have to start with the beautiful topic of expulsion of a partner section 33 we have revised admission and retirement from the question paper also so i'm not going to revise it again now very good good answers given by all of you that means you have revised minor also very carefully very well done expulsion of a partner expulsion ka matlab hota hai partner ko firm mein se nikal dena expel kar dena it is a very very harsh provision it is very very rude and harsh provision it is not very easy to throw out a partner from the firm only if he has done something very very wrong only this power has to be exercised in good faith means that means if he has done some loss for the firm if he has done some sexual harassment kind of a thing or embezzlement with the cash he is uh, doing any kind of frauds cheatings with the firm then only he can be expelled from the firm just because you're not liking his face you don't talk with him nicely he did not go with you for the coffee date or he is not speaking to you you cannot say that i want to expel this partner from a firm you need to have a solid basic reason for expelling a partner from the firm so that's why it is said that it's a very harsh provision it is a very rude kind of a provision where you cannot generally you cannot expel the partners but a partner may not be expelled even by majority unless it is in the good faith so power of expulsion number one point is it must be given in the partnership deed contract kya hota hai partnership agreement hoti hai to partnership deed mein expulsion of partnership ke bare mein diya hona chahiye so expulsion power has has to be existed in the partnership deed it must be exercised by majority of partners now here all the partners is not necessary you can retire all the partners you admit all the partners minor is joining all the partners sub partner is coming all the partners only in case of expulsion majority of partners is required why because something serious has happened so you cannot keep waiting for the consent of all the partners even majority of the partners agreed that we want to throw this partner out of the firm then also you can throw provided it has to be done in good faith only if it is in good for the firm then only you can do that not just because you're not liking him otherwise mr c is very intelligent and he is doing bringing so much business just because you don't like his face that's why you're saying that we don't want him then it cannot happen only in good faith you can take such kind of decisions so pehle teen point clear ho gaye number one expulsion can be done only if it is given in the partnership deed power has to be exercised in good faith and it can be exercised by majority of the partners now how does the expulsion happens number one the expulsion should be in the interest of partnership the first point is if you are expelling a partner it should be in the nature of interest of partnership it should be for the benefit of partnership and not for the loss of partnership you must serve him with a notice kisi ko bhi form mein se nikalne se pehle ek sunwai ka mauka diya jana chahiye notice ka matlab hota hai reasonable opportunity of being heard means sunwai karwana तो आप उसको नोटिस भेजेंगे कि देखिए हम आपको फॉर्म से निकाल रहे हैं अगर आपको अपनी पेश में कुछ कहना है सफाई देनी है तो आप प्लीज आकर अपने लिए कुछ बोल सकते हैं कमिंग बैक टू इंग्लिश द पार्टनर हैज टू बी गिवन अ नोटिस दैट वी आर गोइंग टू थ्रो यू आउट ऑफ द फॉर्म इफ यू वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग इन योर फेवर इट इज बींग गिविंग एन अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ बींग हर्ड मीन्स यू आर अलाउड टू कम एंड स्पीक टू अस सो दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ बींग हर्ड हैज टू बी गिवन बिफोर थ्रोइंग अ पार्टनर आउट ऑफ द फॉर्म so i'm using a very bad word throwing so you have to remember the word expelling expelling means in general language throwing the partner but you actually are not picking up the partner and throwing him out it is just to make you understand so pehle teen points partnership deed mein hona chahiye majority of partners good faith uske baad teen points kya hai expulsion hogi kaise it should be in the interest of partnership notice has to be served opportunity of being heard should be given that's it this is what section 33 tells you examiner gives you any question write these six points you'll get full six marks this is what he expects from you okay 
So let us see how the question comes from this topic of section 33. I'm going to do a small example from the study and then we will take a break because you have really answered so well and you have been doing since morning, you have been doing so well. So these are the sections for incoming and outgoing partners. We have done it in the previous class, Vishnu Chakra versus Chandrika Prasad. This is the case law, which I'm going to take in a while. But before that, let me just quickly tell you, these are the six points, test of good faith, which we have done. So here is a question in front of you. Expulsion does not necessarily result in the dissolution. Expulsion will not put an end. Even if the partnership had will, you can still continue. So in one line, it is telling you that if partner has been expelled, the remaining partners can still continue the firm. There is no problem in that. Now, there were three partners, ABC are the partners in a firm. They were carrying the business successfully from the past several years. A and B fought in ladies' clubs. Spouses of A and B means wives of A and B. A and B are the partners and their wife together, they went to the ladies' club. And on personal issue, A and B's wife had a fight and A's wife was badly hurt. A got so angry on the incident and he convinced C to expel B from the partnership firm. Now, B was expelled without giving any notice from A and C. What would have been your answer? Can we expel a partner without giving notice? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. What can you do in this case? What will be your answer in this case? Ma'am, what will happen if it is not mentioned? So, Gupta, if it is not mentioned in the partnership date, then you cannot expel a partner. It has to be mentioned. 440, point number three, Juhi Kumari is asking. Others can meanwhile answer this. Point number three, this is what we are doing, better opportunity of being heard. It has to be given in good faith means you have to do it in favor of the firm, not just for your personal benefit. No, ma'am, he cannot do so because opportunity of being heard has to be given. It must be exercised in good faith and all those points that we have just discussed. See, the answer also talks about these points. It must be exercised by existing in the partnership date. Majority of partners should be agreeing and it should be in good faith. If all these conditions are not present, then expulsion cannot be in the interest of the firm. For applying the test of the good faith, you should remember that he has to be given a notice and opportunity of being heard. Therefore, notice was not given. This is not held to be valid. And also, secondly, I believe this is a very personal reason that the spouses are having a fight. This cannot be a great reason for the firm's discussion to expel a partner. So you need a solid base. You need a solid reason if you want to expel a partner from the firm. So I hope it's clear till here. And now we'll be starting with the insolvency of a partner. Let's take a small break over here and then we will wind up with the insolvency and death of a partner.
all right welcome back students so you all have given great answers for that expulsion question and it is very important children as it is the examiner has sent you with a question in the exam which has come for expulsion ye jo humne abhi example kara hai as it is example aata hai question paper mein the case study that we have just discussed all right ओके जूही कुमारी इज आस्किंग मैम सेक्शन थर्टी टू बेट आर वॉट यू हैव नॉट अंडरस्टूड इन सेक्शन थर्टी टू सेक्शन थर्टी टू सिंपली टॉक्स अबाउट द रिटायरमेंट सो वी जस्ट डिड एग्जामिनेशन क्वेश्चन पेपर ऑल्सो टे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर रिटायरमेंट थ्री थिंग्स हैव टू बी सीन दैट कंसेंट ऑफ ऑल द पार्टनर्स एक्सप्रेस एग्रीमेंट एंड इफ इट इज एट पार्टनरशिप एट वेल हाउ डू यू रिटायर इन केस ऑफ पार्टनरशिप एट वेल चिल्ड्रेन लेट मी सी हाउ वेल माई अदर स्टूडेंट्स नो अबाउट सेक्शन थर्टी टू इन केस ऑफ पार्टनरशिप एट वेल हाउ डू यू रिटायर do you have to do a phone do you have to do a message do you have to give any notice in writing what is required to be done in case of partnership is at will ayush kumar the rights liabilities of new partners are exactly the same that we have discussed in section 9 10 11 12 13 so once you become a partner miss madhu says i am not audible i hope others can hear me carefully now so uh, ayush kumar all the rights and liabilities of the partner are same as we have discussed in the beginning the only difference ayush kumar for the new incoming partner is that he become liable from the date of his joining and not from the date when the firm was incorporated by giving a notice in writing that's correct all of you have given the correct answer by giving a notice in writing he will become uh, uh, he can retire from a partnership at will and he will be discharged from his liabilities if he has given a public notice now vishnu chandra versus chandrika prasad is a very interesting case law which i wanted to discuss with all of you it says if a partner wants to dissociate from the partnership business disassociate means he is talking about here that if any partner wants to leave the firm or any partner wants to retire from the firm in a clause of partnership deed which was being construed comprehend the situation where the partner wants to retire from the partnership in the event of retirement partnership business will not come to an end so in your simple language what he is trying to tell you that the partnership does not necessarily does not necessarily comes to an end on retirement of a partner means this means remaining partners can still continue to do the business now what happened in this particular case though was abc three partners were there and one of the partner just retired and law said they said now the firm has got dissolved so supreme court judgment was here that if any partner is disassociating he is leaving the partnership firm does not mean that the others have also come into an end so if you have included the clause of retirement of a partner other partners can still continue to do the business mere retirement who was the tenant of the premises in which partnership was carried out would not result in assignment of the tenancy rights in favor of the remaining even though retaining partner ceases to have any right in business so there was a partnership where they were the tenants of the premises so now the partnership business was to be carried out since there was only two partners so one of the partner you cannot simply assign your rights so all your rights liability till the date you were a partner will also remain valid only after you have given the public notice then only the rights will come to an end all right so i hope this case law is very much clear to all of you and the simple provision that you have to remember over here is that the retiring partner if any partner is retiring the business can still continue and the last topic of this chapter is section 34 insolvency of a partner if any partner becomes insolvent this beautiful table that has been given on this page number 4.42 you have to read from here divided into points and learn it. number 1 the insolvent partner when do you become insolvent when you don't have sufficient assets to pay off your liabilities then you cannot be considered as a partner number 2 he will be ceased to be the partner from the date of adjudication number 3 his estate is liable only till the date of order has been given he will not be liable anything after the date of adjudication point number 4 
he is not liable also for any acts of the insolvent partner. And point number five, the firm will not result into dissolution. Like in case of Supreme Court judgment, Vishnu Chakra Vegas, that we have just studied, that the firm will not come into an end. Similarly, if any partner has been declared insolvent, still the firm can continue to the business. Other partners will not close the business just because of insolvency. And this death of a partner also, I think this we have done in the previous lecture, section 35, only example number 15 was left to be covered. So quickly, let's read example number 15. Now, this is very important, death of a partner, as it is, question has come from this topic in exam as well. Okay. So example number 15 says, X was a partner in a firm and firm ordered goods in X's lifetime, but the delivery of goods was made after X's death. In such a case, X estate will not be liable. The creditor can only have the personal decree against. Now, this personal decree means he can have his, he can file a case or he can file a suit only against the surviving partners. However, the goods sold and delivered would not lie against the representatives of the deceased partner because no debt was due during his lifetime. He says the goods, although they were ordered when he was a partner, but once he has died, his liability has come to an end. The dealer cannot file a case against the legal representatives of the deceased partner. And what does section 36 tells you? Section 36 is the same as you have started in Indian Contract Act, section 27. Same, it tells you that outgoing partner, the partner who has retired of the firm, cannot use the firm's name. He cannot represent himself as carrying on the business. He cannot solicit the customer's means. He cannot attract the customers. Solid the customer's means. He cannot. And these are all the things that he cannot do. So any partner who is leaving my firm on retirement or going out, he cannot use the firm's name. He cannot do the same business. He cannot attract the customers with which the firm has been dealing. These restrictions have been given under Section 36 to not to do a completing business. And rights of the outgoing partner to share the subsequent profits. Now, Section 37 simply tells you children, sometime a partner has died or retired, but his share, his share has still not been given to the legal representatives. Or maybe A, B, C, or partners, B has retired, but the same share that he was having, it's still being held by the other partners. It has not been given to the other partners. Now, here, if such a things are happening, then the simple line that you have to remember in this is that if all the partners have not given his share of profit and they're doing the business, then simple interest at the rate of 6% per annum has to be given if you are earning any subsequent profits from the share of the outgoing partners. Bas itni si line is learn karne wali hai. Any member who has died and continuing partners are doing the business without final settlement. Number one point, you have final settlement of accounts. You have used the money in the business. 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 Examination may section 36 and 37 pe kai bar question pucha jata hai. So, is ko chhodna nahi hai, achche se karna. Okay. So, A, B, C are partners in manufacture of machinery. A is entitled to three-eighth of the partnership. He becomes bankrupt. B and C continues. So, bankrupt ho gaya, that means insolvent declare ho gaya. Now, he cannot do the business. Without paying A's profit, B and C still continue the business. A's estate will get three-eighth of the profits from the date of the bankruptcy till the final liquidation. So, his share of profit is not going to give him. Plus, if you have given his share of profit without any business or income, then you give him 6% per annum in trust. All right. A, B, C are partners. C retires after selling his share in the firm and B pays to pay the value. The value of the share was the date of retirement. Here, C is entitled to recover the same with the interest. So, same example number 7, maybe it's like, if any partner has retired, his share is yet to be paid, then you simply give him the interest amount on which he is entitled. And the last topic of section 38 is revocation of continuing guarantee. So, now since you have done indemnity and guarantee under Indian Contract Act, so my question to my dear students is, what is the meaning of guarantee? You have to tell me this time. <clears throat> earlier I used to tell the students the meaning of guarantee but now you have already done Indian Contract Act you know the syllabus has included indemnity and guarantee so you have to tell me what is the meaning of the word guarantee Prince Kumar section 36.c simply tells you that 
once you have retired from the firm you cannot do the same kind of business suppose mera partnership mein jahan main kaam karti thi unka business tha sale and purchase of chocolates so we were the dealers of cadbury chocolate so now i cannot use the same cadbury chocolates name i cannot do the same business i was already aware who are the customers who were coming in the partnership business i cannot go and tell them that look now i am doing a sole proprietor business please you leave the firm and come to me i cannot have the same customers i cannot attract them towards my business security given to someone or something anjali is saying guarantee means kisi ka kaam karne ka 100% surety dena okay riti so guarantee what is the meaning of guarantee indemnity and guarantee you have done right so guarantee means when somebody has given an assurance that look tomorrow if this person is not giving you the payment i will give the payment i assure you so there were three people mr a b and c and a sold the pen to mr b a had a doubt that whether b will make my payment or not but c who is a friend of a is also a friend of b and c gave him a guarantee that look mr a you can sell him the pen because okay very nice answers you have given third party stands as a guaranteed between principal debtor and creditor mr motiani suraj monu juhi kumari anand no jakansha prajesh prajesh pali tambeshwari riti anjali divya very good nice answers so here c is giving the guarantee that look tomorrow if p fails to pay your amount i will give you 10000 rupees so there was a deal of 10000 sale that he is making and c is acting as a guarantor he is giving a surety so principal debtor is mr a mr b is the person for whom the goods have been sold and c is standing as a guarantor now this is the meaning of guarantee now what happens is sometimes the firm has given the guarantee to another people that okay if tomorrow this person does not make you the payment i will pay you the make the payment so this kind of guarantee is generally given by the firm and what is the meaning of continuing guarantee suppose the firm says that in first month i will pay you 5000 second month i will pay you 5000 again then 10000 guarantee so whatever continuation you have been given for the guarantee that is known as continuing guarantee okay arun and p riti you all are right i said you all have given the correct answers don't worry now listen here carefully what i'm trying to tell you so sometimes this kind of guarantee is given by the firm and it is given in the continuation means for the continuous transactions you have given the correct now section 38 simply tells you one line that this guarantee comes to an end revocation ho jana means end ho jana jab bhi firm mein koi change hoga in case of a retirement death of a partner whenever the constitution of the firm changes the continuing guarantee given by the firm will also come to an end simple shabdo mein likh lo whenever there is any change in the constitution of business constitution of firm the continuing guarantee given by the firm will also come to an end whenever there is any change in the constitution of firm the continuing guarantee given by the firm will also come to an end all right this is what simply section 38 tells you that means now you cannot continue with the same guarantee that you have given <laughs> i hope chapter 2 is now nicely clearly absorbed by all of you and now we are going to start because we have lots of time and we are going to start with the third chapter and as promised we will be covering the part of registration of form from the third chapter itself today just show on the presentation so any doubts you have in chapter number 2 you can ask me because now we're going to start with the third chapter that is registration and dissolution of the firm can open the chapter of dissolution of the firm from here also
Right children. Abhishek Cha says crystal clear and Oj also says the same. So that's great. Yes, Mr. Muhammad. So there is no dissolution on the retirement and admission of a partner. This is what we have understood. Uh, section 16 and 36, Anushka Raj, you can ask specifically what, what do you want to understand in between both the sections. Section 36 simply tries to tell you that you cannot do a competitive business once you have left the firm. Okay. You cannot be the competitors of your own firm. What is the meaning of constitution of the firm? Mr. K. Manish Darshan is asking. Constitution of the firm means firm mein jo log hai, unki koi bhi changes ho rahe hai. ki A, B, C partners hai. Ab D ek aur partner join kar lete hai. ab A, B, C, D constitution ho gaya. Agar chhod ke jate hai, to A, B, C reh rahe hai. E ek aur partner join kar rahe is tarah se koi bhi constitution means jo bhi log hai firm mein, उनको बोलते हैं कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्या फर्म कॉन्स्टिट्यूट करती है कभी कम हो रहे हैं पार्टनर्स कभी बढ़ रहे हैं रिटायरमेंट हो रही है तो कम हो रहे हैं डिसोल्यूशन हो रही है तो बंद हो रही है फर्म एडमिशन हो रही है तो ज्वाइन हो रही है एंड द मीनिंग ऑफ प्राइमा फेसी समबडी इज आस्किंग प्राइमा फेसी मींस व्हाट अपीयर्स टू यू इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर आईज सो व्हेन वी डिड रिस्क प्राइमा फेसी पासेस विद द ओनरशिप सो वंस यू हैव गिवन द ओनरशिप इफ आई हैव सोल्ड दिस वाटर बॉटल टू यू यू हैव बिकम द ओनर सो नाउ ऑल द रिस्क प्राइमा फेसी द रिस्क इज योर्स देखने में जो लगता है वो होता है प्राइम ओके सो वेलकम टू न्यू चैप्टर मोड्स ऑफ इफेक्टिंग रजिस्ट्रेशन नाउ टेल मी स्टूडेंट्स इज इट कंपलसरी टू गेट द फॉर्म रजिस्टर्ड व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड द इंडियन पार्टनरशिप एक्ट आई टोल्ड यू वेदर इट इज कंपलसरी और इट इज ऑप्शनल टेल मी जल्दी से बताओ फटाफट से मुझे कि क्या कंपनी फॉर्म की रजिस्ट्रेशन कराना कंपल्सरी होता है ये मैम और नो मैम क्या हमें फॉर्म को लीगली इस्टेब्लिश करना पड़ता है उसे रजिस्टर बनाना पड़ता है यस लाइक एडमिशन एंड रिटायरमेंट एक्स करें चेंज इन कॉम बिल्कुल ठीक प्रिंस कुमार बिल्कुल ठीक बोला आपने जो विजिबल हो बिल्कुल ठीक यस एट द फर्स्ट साइट टेल मी स्टूडेंट इज इट कंपल्सरी टू गेट द फॉर्म रजिस्टर्ड विद रजिस्ट्रार ऑफ फॉर्म जैसे हमने कंपनी के केस में रजिस्ट्रार ऑफ कंपनीज के पास जाते हैं ऐसे ही हम फॉर्म की रजिस्ट्रेशन के लिए रजिस्ट्रार ऑफ फॉर्म के पास जाते so number one question to all of you is is it compulsory to get the firm registered i'm waiting for your answers absolutely correct no is the correct answer no is the correct answer it is completely optional it is not compulsory for the firm to get itself registered why because company is getting a legal incorporated status like this firm is not getting a legal and corporative structure so first point in your notes you can write down registration of firm is not compulsory it is completely optional to get yourself registered it is not at all compulsory but then you will say ma'am section 59 tells you certain consequences of non registration section 60 and 61 tells you certain consequences of non registration what does it mean it says if your firm is not registered hoga to kuch nahi but kuch benefits hain jo law ne aapko diye hain agar aapki firm registered hoti hai to to aap wo benefits enjoy kar sakte ho agar aap registered nahi ho fir aap wo benefits nahi enjoy kar sakte simple si baat so consequences means results so if you're not a registered firm what result you have to bear is that there are certain kind of benefits which are given to the firm which is a registered firm if you're not registered then you will be deprived of those kind of benefits and those are the benefits which we are going to discuss in today's class at length and dissolution of the firm means what is the meaning of dissolution of firm aap sabko pata hai dissolution of the firm means when the firm comes to an end very good very nice ariharan says are there any consequences of registration so consequences of non registration bachcha means ki what will happen if your firm is not registered and what all is happening those four points that we going to do which happens when you are not registered are the four benefits that you get when you are registered so it's one of the same thing for the non registration you do not get those benefits 
if the examiner asks you what are the benefits of registration, you can add those four points that these are the benefits which I get on registration. Ashnika Gupta says, ma'am, why it is not compulsory? So why it is not compulsory? Because firm is not legating a legal corporate status. Firm is a very flexible kind of agreement base. You can start a form of organization where you simply need to sign a partnership deed and you set up a business. It does not have legal formalities like going to the co or going to the registrar's office, getting the application done. All this filing work is not compulsory. But certain cases, it says law has given you certain advantages which you get only when your firm is a registered firm. All right. All right. Now, very nicely you have given when the firm comes to an end, that is dissolution. Now, let us see what happens when the firm gets registered, how the registration has to be done. Now, this is the question in June 2023, six months question has come. What is the procedure of registration? This is the procedure of registration, section 58, 59 and the registration of firm. So if examiner gives you such question, these three, four slides you have to learn and you have to write it. We will also be covering it from the study material as well. So what does section 58 tells you? It tells you there is a statement in the prescribed form which tells you what all needs to be filed with the registrar of firms. So section 58 and 59 are two specific sections which tells you that these are the statements that you need to file with the registrar. You have to tell him your firm's name, the place of business where you're doing the business, what kind of business you're doing, how many partners have joined the firm, what is the full name and address and what is the duration of partnership? Duration of partnership means if you give the fixed term, then it is a fixed partnership. If it is for a particular term, then it is a particular partnership. And if nothing has been fixed, then it is a partnership at will. Remember, fixed partnership, particular partnership, is it a partnership at will or it's a general partnership? So you have to mention about the duration for the time period if it is a fixed partnership. So firm's name has to be given. What are the things that you have to take care as a name? We will read all that from the study material. But here, section 58 is simply telling you that an application needs to be filed with the registrar of the firms. And that application should have all these seven cont six contents, which you need to be carefully fill in in the application while filing it to the registrar of firms. And now what the registrar will do, he will receive the, from every state has their respective state registrar or firm. So Maharashtra has their own registrar, Delhi has their own registrar. So now if I'm in Delhi and I have received all the uh, formalities from the firm, I will be satisfied that all the provisions have been complied. And if the registrar is satisfied, he will make an entry in the register. So for example, you are the firm ABC Associates. You have given me all the correct information about the name of the firm, your business, everything is fine and it is carried on. And this name has not been previously used by any other firm. Then I will record an entry in the register of the firms and I will file that statement. And finally, I will issue you a registration certificate. Registration certificate means that firm is registered firm. And now you are a registered firm. Now you can please go and enjoy those benefits which have been given to a registered firm. So this is how your registration certificate looks like. The certificate of registration, Indian Partnership Act 1932. Registration number has been given. This is certified that a firm named Cargo Pack. So a firm is Cargo Pack. They have filed application file kari hogi. section 58. They have all the details. So now the registrar is satisfied. He has a certificate of registration. He has a stamp on his name. And you have written the firm's name. Hua hai, registration number is written. And its head office details is given. Narul, uh, Nirul West, Navi Mumbai, Thane, Maharashtra. This has been dated duly registered under the partnership act. Okay, fir again, it is giving in Hindi also. So English and Hindi, both the word languages are used while giving your registration certificate. The date has been given 24th February 2015. Say this has been registered. Given under my hands this 24th February. So he will sign the registrar of firm, assistant of registrar of firms, assistant, deputy or assistant. So he is the assistant who is signing. And this is how your registration certificate is submitted. Examiner is not going to ask you to make a registration certificate. I'm just showing you the practicalities, how the firm gets registered. So once you have given all these applications and all formalities have been fulfilled, your entry is recorded and the name has been clearly written and registration number is given to the organization. 
So first you have to write about compliance under section 58. If examiner gives you question, you have to write compliance under section 58. You have to write about recording of statement in the register section 59 and then you have to simply mention about the certificate of registration as given by the registrar of forms. So it's a farm and company has been registered. Let us try to cover the points from the study material also. So this is the point of registration and dissolution of the form. Students, please also do all the descriptive questions from chapter number two. Although we have revised it also very nicely, all the revision has been done, you have been answering, but still study has given so many descriptive questions. You must go through all these questions and please ask doubts also whenever you have time, once you have gone through. Application of registration, we have done Different registrar of areas have been having the registrar of firms and all these duration names, everything has to be given in full address. So, first you have to learn this in application. Then you have to learn this in application that each application shall be signed by all the partners. Obviously, you will give your signature na, that yes, I am a partner in the firm. Now, this is very, very interesting and important also. It says the firm's name shall not include the following words. वो कह रहे हैं जब आपने ABC Associates बनाया तो examiner आपसे पूछेगा कि आप ऐसा बना सकते हो ABC Crown Associates, ABC Emperor, ABC Empress, ABC Kings, ABC Queens, Royal ये वाले नाम हमें नहीं allowed है हम ये नाम नहीं use कर सकते अपनी organization के साथ अपनी partnership form के साथ Except where the state government has given his consent, where you have taken the approval from the state government, you have got government se approval from the government, you have got your order in writing, that yes, I have allowed the imperial and king word, allowed hai. then you can use otherwise these kind of words, which are related to the patronage and approval of government is required, there you have to take the approval of state government. Apart from that, you cannot use these kind of words in your organization's name. Miss Lakshmi, you can download the presentations and assignments from the website portal. Yes, these are the words, Akansha, which you should not be using in their names. So you have to take the approval of the government if you try to use these kind of names in the uh, firm's name. Now, after that, section 59 tells you how the registration happens. Now, you have to simply remember these six points. In the next class, I'm going to ask you the procedure. So learn these six points that should be included in your Registrar firms, how you have to learn it, it's very simple. Firm ka naam hona chahiye, business hona chahiye, kaha pe karti hai, name of any other places. So head office and also other branches. So date on which the partners are joining. Why this date is important? Do you know why this date is important? This is a very important date. For example, any partner has joined the firm in uh, 1st January 2022. Now, if the, I have taken the registration of the firm and that partner is registered, his name is already uh, given to the registrar of firms. Now, say for example, February 24, another partner, Mr. D, has joined. So, was his name already in the registration certificate? No, ma'am, his name is there. Yes. So, you have to file an additional document with the uh, registrar of firms that look, this admission of new partner has happened. Please in include his name also. That is how, that is why the date of partner joining the firm is very important. This is a case study bhi aegi next page. Pe. You will understand it more better. And again, the permanent addresses has to be given in duration of form. But you can use learning ki aadat dalo because foundation is again a baby in front of you as far as your CA foundation final and inter is concerned. In inter, you will have to learn so many provisions. So foundation is nothing in front of your CA inter. So if we have habit in notes, banane ki, learn karne ki, paragraphs, ko, points, we will go to our points. So it will be very easy because habits once formed are carried in a long run. So please, my advice to all of you is once you have done the chapters, beautifully make your notes and try to learn it from your notes because it becomes very simple when you write it with your own hands. Samaj aage and name me kya kya cheeze nahi include karni king, emperor, imperial, all these things should not be included. And now how the registration happened? Number one point, ma'am, registrar should be satisfied. All the points. Now we will record an entry. Number three, he will file the statement. Number four, he will issue the registration certificate. Kaam khat. So all these points have been complied. That means registration certificate will be issued. 
recording of the entry is the routine duty of registrar now this is very interesting he says it is his routine duty means once he sees that all the completion of the activities have been done application has been nicely filed everything has been delivered he has to record it it is his duty he has to make an entry in the register forms but when does the form get registered only when the registration certificate has been issued even after a suit has been filed it is necessary to withdraw the suit and then and now sometimes what happens what does it mean it says abc associates had filed a case in uh, court the case is going on and now they thought that let's get a self registered so first you have to withdraw the suit and then only you can get a fresh registration so registration of form can only be done with the firm should not have filed any case or a suit if you have filed you need to withdraw that suit and then apply for a, a registration and then get a fresh suit filing 59 a subsection a1 it only simply tells you that any form has not been sent or delivered to the registrar within the time which has been given then a penalty of 100 rupees per day delay will be applicable so if you are doing a late registration the time period has been given under 581a you have to comply with that if you are not complying with that time period then the penalty of 100 rupees will be applicable now this whole page nobody ever thought can be very important because it is writing so many basic things and look at this smart examiner he gave you six marks question on this whole page so isko learn kar lena ye sara registration procedure hai jiske upar abhi abhi june 23 mein question aaya hai previous one okay and december 23 also once it has been uploaded we'll try to cover that as well in the classes now what are the consequences of non registration of the form section 69 section 69 simply tells you that certain disabilities have been given to the partners if the form is not registered it says although registration is not compulsory but certain disabilities means certain things cannot be enjoyed by the partners if they are not a registered form now what are those things number one no suit can be filed in the civil court by firm or other co partners against the third party so let's understand with the help of example abc are three partners in a firm mr q is a regular dealer who has been supplying fans to them and abc used to make them payment once what happened abc has made a payment of rupees 10000 for a bill of rupees 5 fans and this payment has already been made and q failed to supply them 5 fans q shut down his business he ran away he went to canada he did not give them he ran away and he opened a shop somewhere else he did not give them these five fans he has taken the money and he cheated them now what do you think angry a or b and c will do they will file a case in the court law says if you have not registered form you cannot take an action against third party simple you cannot file a case in the civil court no person can bring an action against the third party if any breach of contract so this he has done a breach of contract he was supposed to give us five pounds he has failed to give it now if the form is not registered you cannot take an action against the other partners <coughs> just give me one second students <coughs> just one minute break
Yes, students, please bear with my bad throat. So Nitya Shri is asking that uh, why do we need to pay penalty because registration of firm is not compulsory. So very interesting question. So here he is simply trying to tell you, Bacha, that where application need to be filed, section 58 is something which tells you how the application needs to be filed. Now it has given you a certain time period under that application. If you're not complying with those provisions, you're doing any default, you're not giving the correct names, you're making a default in time period for which has been specified, then a penalty of 100 per delay will be charged. If you're not making an application, you're not getting registered, then there is no problem. It is only related to section 58 where you're filing an application, then you're not complying with the provisions, then obviously an action can be taken in case of that. Yes, Akansha, the suit means the same when you do the breach of contract. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. I'm better now. So, because you have to speak at a so much fast speed because we have to complete the syllabus also. So, at times the throat gets stuck in between. Okay. So, no suit can be filed. So, you have understood this first point. So, I cannot take an action against the third party if I'm not a registered firm. So, in other words, my one of my friend was asking what is the benefit of registration? So, this is the benefit of registration which is written that a registered firm can file a suit against third party and the person suing have been in the register of firms as a partner. Now, what does this mean? This means we understand. We listen to this from the hand. ABC three partners are partners. We have registration. We have complied with section 58. Comply karaya. Ma am, aapne bola tha ki inka date of joining, bhi dal dena, duration of partnership. We have done everything and ABC firm ko registered firm. We have done registered firm. Kara liya. Say, for example, we have got the registration certificate on 1st January 2024. And they all have joined the firm in 2023. We obtained the registration. Now, Mr. D has joined as a partner in a firm on 1st February 24. Now, there was a dealer Q. Again, he played the same game. He supplied you five fans. Uh, he took money from you for 10,000 and he did not give you those five fans. Can D... ABC can ABC take an action against Mr. Q? Yes, ma'am, it is a registered firm. Abhi abhi to aapne bataya ki agar firm registered hai, then it can file an action against third party. But ABC, D are three partners, four partners. Can D also take an action against Q? Jaldi batao maash. Aakki bari. Yes, ma'am, they can take an action against Mr. Q. Why no? Somebody saying yes, ma'am. Somebody saying no, ma'am. Why yes? Why? Because his name is not in the register of firms. When he joined, his admission has recently happened. Your name has to be given to the registrar of firms only when you send the letter to the additional directorate of firms, registrar of firms then only Mr. D can take an action. Otherwise, if D's name is not there, then he cannot take an action against the third party. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. So all of you have understood. Priti Bharti, don't worry. Abhi hum niche example karenge. Tab aapko dobara detail mein samaj aajega. But again, somebody is writing, yes ma'am, no ma'am. Please listen carefully. Your name has to be there in the registered form. Then only you can file an action. 1st January 2024 ko maine kaha form registered ho gai hai. Now, if your form is, Mr. D has joined the form after 1st January, that means on 1st February he is joining, then he cannot take an action against the third party because his name is not appearing in the register of forms. So once you include his name in the register of forms, then definitely he can take an action. Now, second point is again very, very interesting. No relief to partners for set-off of claim. So set-off of claims, kya hota hai? again, what is simple example is something. Set-off of claims means one partner is Mr. A and there is one dealer, Mr. B. A had to give 100 rupees to B. B had to give 80 rupees to A's firm. So what is the meaning of set-off? If I try to do set-off, then whom should pay what amount? Tell me. Set-off of claim ka meaning samaj rahe hai. 
ए की फॉर्म ने हंड्रेड रुपीज देने थे बी को बी ने एट्टी रुपीज देने थे तो सेटिंग ऑफ कर कर क्या रिजल्ट आप चाहिए Twenty rupees has to be paid by A. This is the set off. Very good, Mr. Tushar B. You said no in the previous case. That was correct. So no is the correct answer. Twenty uh, is the correct answer. Mr. A should set off the claim and give him twenty rupees instead of waiting for recovering eighty and then paying hundred. Set off of claim का meaning समझ आ गया ना ये होता है hundred twenty rupees हमने pay कर. But law says that you cannot. do such set off of claims if you are not a registered firm that means a has to pay 100 fully and wait to recover 80 rupees from b you cannot do the setting off of claims let's include the amount 1000 over here and 800 so 200 is generally the set off that we can do but this is not allowed to be done if the firm is not registered because we are talking about the consequences of non registration So here we are discussing the firm is not registered. Therefore, you cannot set off the claims. You will have to pay one thousand fully and then wait for B to pay eight hundred rupees whenever he wants to pay. But again, there is an exception to this rule. It says, if the suit is valued for more than hundred or other proceedings to enforce. So up till rupees hundred, you can do the set off, but not below above hundred rupees. So only the relief has been given to the partners for setting off the claims up till hundred rupees. Anything over and above beyond hundred, you cannot do that kind of set off. Now, third point is again some part which is related to the first point. Now, see for example, A, B, three are partners and they are always having a quarrel and fight among each other. And C did lot of harm and loss in the business. Can A and B take an action against other partner? It says a grief partner cannot take an action against other partner if the firm is not registered. So if your firm is not a registered firm, even the partners cannot fight with each other in a court. You cannot file a case in the register uh, in the court if you are not a registered firm. But he can file a dissolution of the firm for asking for his accounts and realization of property. So Mr. C was very angry. He said, "I'm going to leave your firm. I'm not happy with which A and B are running." But he cannot take an action against you in the court. But can he ask for the dissolution? Yes, he can ask for the dissolution. He can say that I want the firm to be resolved because I want to realize my assets, pay me my uh, share of profits and my assets back, which have been contributed in the firm. Clear? Okay. Third point B. So number one. पार्टनर्स के नॉट फाइल एन एक्शन अगेंस्ट थर्ड पार्टीज अपनी लैंग्वेज में जिन्होंने लिखना है पार्टनर्स के नॉट फाइल एन एक्शन अगेंस्ट थर्ड पार्टीज इफ इट इज अ नॉन रजिस्टर्ड फॉर्म्स पार्टनर्स के नॉट क्लेम सेट ऑफ इफ इट इज अ नॉट रजिस्टर्ड फॉर्म पार्टनर्स के नॉट फाइल अ गेस अगेंस्ट ईच अदर इफ इट इज नॉट अ रजिस्टर्ड फॉर्म एंड फोर्थ पॉइंट इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इट इज इवन इफ यू आर नॉट अ रजिस्टर्ड फॉर्म थर्ड पार्टी कैन स्टिल टेक एन एक्शन अगेंस्ट यू Even if you are not a registered firm, अगर आप registered नहीं भी हैं, third party फिर भी आपके against action ले सकती है, तो better है आप registration करा लीजिए, क्योंकि आप भी तभी action ले सकते हैं अगर आप registered. But चाहे आप registered हैं या नहीं हैं, third party can still file a case against. So in our example, where A, B, C were supposed to pay ten thousand, suppose this time we have taken those five fans from Mr. Q, and A, B, C did not pay ten thousand. अब क्या हुआ इन्होंने फैंस तो ले लिए फाइव बट इन्होंने टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज नहीं पे कर तो कैन क्यू फाइल एन एक्शन अगेंस्ट एबीसी क्या क्यू एबीसी के अगेंस्ट एक्शन फाइल कर सकता है यस मैम और नो मैम एंड वाई मैम
yes ma'am he can file an action why because he is a third party he can file an action yes ma'am kar sakta hai because registration nahi hua fir bhi kar sakta hai very good very nice answers yes ma'am for even if form is no no tameshwari he cannot file because form is not registered the answer correct answer is because registration does not affect rights of third parties here are certain exceptions that we are going to do right of third party to sue the firm will not have any effect on the registration so even if whether you are registered or not third party can still take a case against you i hope now these four points section 69 has become very very simple for you all right so now let's quickly read the exceptions those are given over here non registration form does not affect the following right so this is something which we have excluded which we have concluded from the above paragraph only so it says right of third party so what are exceptions to section 679 that third party can still file a case against me right of partners to ask for the dissolution maine abhi aapko bataya ki agar nahi bhi registered hai fir bhi aap dissolution of firm and realization of assets ki baat kar sakte hain right to set off up till rupees 100 in value this is also which is mentioned over above power of an official assignee to release the property of insolvent and to bring an action now this is something which i would like to explain to you power of official assignee or receiver of court who is an official assignee fir se le lete a b c three partners a declared insolvent a is declared insolvent now what will happen when a partner is declared insolvent an official assignee is appointed by the court now this official assignee will take all the assets in his hand in order to pay off the liabilities of mr a what will this official assignee do what is the role of insolvent part in case of insolvency the official assignee will be appointed he will sell off all your assets and properties in order to whatever amount is realized he will use to pay in the liabilities now law says whether you are a registered firm or non registered this official assignee can still release the property and file an action official assignee's role in case of an insolvent partner is not affected because of registration or non registration of the firm he still has his power to take the property of insolvent partner in his hand and can file an action for his realization of property and disposing of liabilities samajh aa gaya sabko exceptions bhi clear ho gaya hindi mein bhi bata diya ab to aap sab logon ko jaise aap kehte ho waisi padha diya theek hai तो फिर एक टेस्ट ले लिया जाए एंड लास्ट लास्ट पॉइंट दैट वी हैव इंक्लूडेड राइट टू स्यूट एंड प्रोसीडिंग्स इनिशिएटेड बाय लीगल रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स ऑफ डिसीज पार्टनर टू अकाउंट सो डिसीज पार्टनर्स इफ पार्टनर हैज डाइड व्हाट हैपन एग्जांपल नंबर फाइव फिफ्थ पॉइंट का भी सुन लो ध्यान से एबीसी थ्री पार्टनर्स एन ए डाइड now his legal representatives will step in this is what we started in section uh, 35 36 uh, 34 and 35 of uh, uh, previous chapter death of a partner so his legal representatives will come and they will ask for his share of profits now for example uh, the b and c did not give his share of profits and this is the legal representative of mr a that is mrs a she said that please give my share of profits of mr a b and c refused to give and they are non registered firms they are not registered now can this legal representative file a case against them can she take an action on the basis of point number 5 tell me can mrs a why there is a confusion in the third point children third point simply tells you that in case of an official assignee when you are declared insolvent then i don't have to see whether you are a registered firm or non registered i will simply come and take your assets if you know the meaning of insolvent then only you will be able to understand if you don't know then first you have to understand the meaning of insolvent so insolvent means a person who is not able to pay off his liabilities he does not have sufficient assets so insolvency ka matlab hota hai diwaliya nikal jata to jab koi insolvent declare hota hai to court uske liye official assignee appoint karta hai ya official assignee court appoint karta hai aap nahi appoint okay so when this official assignee is appointed then he will come and take your assets so law says if if it is a not registered firm then also official assignee can take yes then also he can bas itni si baat keh raha 
and all those who have given yes ma'am mrs a can file a case against other partners excellent beautiful very right because why we are saying hum nahi keh rahe law mein kaha hai fifth point mein ki deceased partner ke legal representatives they can ask for the realization of property and they can also ask for the firm's accounts even if you are not a registered firm all right so this example number 1 is little technical which will take me around 7 to 10 to 5 15 minutes to explain so i think time we are already running uh, behind of time so as promised we have completed examination for also you have so nicely we have taken all the doubts of chapter 2 also and we have started chapter 3 we have completed registration procedure we have done the consequences of non registration at length so i have 2 3 minutes i give you time for your doubts whatever you want to ask ask yes mr k manish even if the form is not registered officially signed will have to pass thank you ariharan yes ashnika definitely can file a case legal here scan file so now i'm here to answer your doubts we have 2 3 minutes left if you have any doubts feel free to ask yes anushka raj beautiful definition given of insolvent that's correct so gupta is asking section 69 second point so second point so gupta simply tells you that the partners cannot claim the set off against each other so i suppose i had to pay you 1000 rupees and you owe me 500 rupees so we can generally say na that okay i uh, so gupta i will pay you 500 leave it we don't need to i don't need to pay you 1000 and then i take 500 back from you so instead of that we can do a set off i will simply pay you 500 rupees the balance this is what this is the meaning of set off so if you are not a registered firm you cannot do such kind of set offs with the third parties so what what is the uh, disability in this case what is the disadvantage so i will have to pay the dealer full full 1000 now whether he pays me 500 on wherever he pays me i have to wait for that i cannot just quickly set off and pay only 500 thank you ishnika gupta i am glad you enjoyed the session general and particular partnership with ditya kumar if you think it from the view point of liability then it will become very easy general partnership unlimited liability particular partnership liability limited up to that particular event and limited liability partnership has a limited liability yes anil yadav you can see if you want to enjoy the registration uh, advantages then registration of firm is important Aditya Kumar, partnership at will is the partnership where the time period has not been decided. चले तो सालों तक ना चले तो रात तक तो दो बंदों ने पार्टनरशिप करी अगर उनका मन है तो शाम को ही बंद कर देंगे नहीं तो लंबी चलती रही तो जो नॉर्मल पार्टनरशिप जिसमें टाइम पीरियड फिक्स है डिफाइंड है वो फिक्स पार्टनरशिप है सो पार्टनरशिप एट विल इज सिंपली एट योर ओन चॉइस डोंट वरी मुस्कान यू कैन स्टिल मेक योर नोट्स यू डोंट हैव टू वरी चिल्ड्रन यू हैव टू बी वेरी पॉजिटिव अबाउट योर स्टडीज ओके Persuasive motiani means persuasive means in continuation where you do not have to stop you have to be continuously doing that thing. Disabilities means the disadvantages that the firm is suffering because of non-registration. आपने meditation के बारे में बोला था okay रिति भारती meditation चलो remind me sometime when we have more time we can try doing that but it's very difficult in between the syllabus to take it this kind of sessions in between. no i don't np this is a old session old uh, chapters only they were earlier also part of your know, sleepers thank you mr s sudhakar thank you negmi thank you so much for wishing me good health god bless all of you no mr arun np you can ask me the queries here itself thank you sanya thank you kansha uh yes mohammad for up till 100 rupees you can do the setting off but it is not allowed for more so mr prince kumar your answer to your question how to revise so number 1 when you attend my lecture in the evening same day whatever we have done in the class sit and give it a fair reading from the study material number 2 thing make your notes along with the session whatever i am telling you whatever examples i am telling you you should always make your notes ready after the class also so like you have done indian contract sale of goods and we are almost finishing partnership so you should be picking up indian contract and sale of goods we have revised today in the descriptive questions also that we discussed so you knew the answers 
so you have to decide how you have to do it so four times each chapter should be gone through in front of your eyes that is what i have discussed with you number one when you're doing it with me number two when i ask you in the evening and sit and revise and make your notes number three after the end of session when you just revise pick up your chapters and give it a fair reading again and fourth is the day before your exam when you're going to read the entire syllabus so make sure that you're able to do these four times you should have crossed the syllabus so gupta leave section 59 that's not important it's simply telling you about the penalty if you have not default any uh, time period that is mentioned under 58 1a then you have to uh, pay the penalty of 100 rupees per day all right thank you students for wonderful comments i'm glad you enjoyed the session and your beautiful wishes made my day even more beautiful thank you god bless you don't waste your time on weekends study hard do spend some time for your hobbies and other activities also but plan your day well in advance if you make a time table you plan your day you will never go here all right all the best see you all on tuesday goodbye